Hey there, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Tom Rigsby. This is 7 Minutes in the Morning, where you get your daily dose from me. And, uh, oh, hey, I'm a little crooked this morning. Let me see if I can fix that there. That's better. How y'all doing this morning? It's Friday. A lot of rain here last night, so, um, everything's damp and wet, but it's going to be a fantastic Friday. I've just decided. That's the way it's going to be. So, you can have one also. There you go. There's my <coughs> my blessing for you to have a fantastic Friday. Hey, when you get here, if you would do me a favor, just leave a comment down there. Say hi, good morning, how you doing, what's that chicken doing in the background, whatever you want to say in the comment. Free Coaching Friday. Everything is up for grabs today. Just leave a comment. That'll let me know that you were here, and it will tell Facebook to keep you uh, involved in the conversation that goes on long after the video is over down in those comments. If you are listening on your podcast catcher, join us on Facebook, TomRigsby.com slash Facebook. Watch the show live. You get to leave questions and comments in real time also. So good morning to Keith, Joe, Jeremy, Abby. Vicky, great crowd joining this morning. So we've been talking about relationships this week, and I thought, um, so it's Friday, so that's uh, normally Free Coaching Friday. I'm going to answer uh, one of the questions that has come up a couple of times during the week um, in the course of doing a little bit of a recap today. So I'll try that out, see how you guys like that and uh, see if that's something we want to do on a regular basis. So in talking about relationships, right, we have, man, we've kind of been all over the place with them, but a couple of the concepts that came out of that. Number one, this is a uh, Jim Rohn uh, original. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So think about that for just a minute. If you find the five people, think of the five people that you spend the most time with, your income will be square in the middle of their income. Your uh, level of satisfaction with your life will be square in the middle of level of satisfaction in that group. In all things, you will be the average of those five people. So if you want to improve in any of those areas, one of the key contributors to that is you have to have uh, in your group of people, in your uh, group of acquaintances, people that are ahead of you, to pull you toward them, to skew that average in the direction that you want to go. Which leads us to, um, yeah, leads us toward the second point, right? The, the other, uh, another thing I wanted to recap this week is that you need to have, you need to kind of divide your group, your best group of relationship up into roughly in the thirds. So a third of the people should be similarly situated to where you are. A third should be ahead of you so they can pull you along. And another third should be behind you so you can encourage them along. Right? That, and we talked yesterday about how that is one of the most important pieces. Now, here's the question that's come up a couple of times this week. Tom, what about toxic relationships? What about those relationships that um, oh, I don't know, drain the life out of me, suck the joy out of my existence, however you want to uh, want to describe that. There's really two facets to this question, so I'm going to give you a two-part answer. Um, sometimes we maintain relationships with people just because. And then sometimes we maintain relationships with people because in some way we are connected to them, inextricably connected to them. So let's talk about the just because group first. The uh, general consensus answer to this question is you, you have to jettison those toxic relationships, which for some is fine. If you have a customer, for example, that you hate to see their name in your inbox, you hate to see their name on the top of a message note or on a text message, they just, you don't even want to read it cause, because you just know that whatever it says is going to just suck the wind right out of your sails. If you're watching this morning and you have have or have had customers like that, just 
give me a, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, those people suck. <laughs> Whatever the case may be, leave me a comment. Let me know that uh, that you're there with me on that. I'm going to get a little sip of coffee here. It's one of the great things about doing this show in the morning. I get to have coffee while I'm doing the show. I love that. All right, so for those toxic relationships that, you know, are customers, that are just relationships you're maintaining just because, then that conventional wisdom to jettison that relationship makes sense. You can do that. Fire that customer. Um, move away from, you know, that old neighbor, uh, that old high school or college friend, whatever the case may be. If it's just a, a relationship of, not even convenience, but circumstance, yes, you can definitely jettison on that relationship. Now the more difficult facet to this answer, what if it's a relationship that persists for some other reason, right? Say a family member, or one that I see frequently is the, the ex-spouse who is also the parent of a child, right? Those relationships where... There is some kind of bond there that, that is not easily broken, right? And, and look, everybody has uh, everybody. There are people who have taken even those relationships and just said, not doing that anymore, and cut them out. That's a pretty dramatic response to what may be a temporary circumstance. Not always. I mean, sometimes people are toxic. They're always going to be toxic. But sometimes they're just having a bad day, too. Sometimes they have strung together a bad year. <laughs> or whatever the case may be. So, here's my preference on how to deal with those. Not necessarily saying this is right or wrong. Just how you have to do it. Right? If there is a relationship that is not building you up, that it takes energy from you, it... it, it deflates your sales. It sucks the life and joy out of, out of your day. Don't invest in that relationship. I mean, if, if they are damaging your joy, if they are cutting into your joy, don't. I mean, what are you going to do? Right? If you keep investing in that relationship and they continue to act the same way they're acting, you're going to build resentment toward them. I've done all of these things to try and make it better, and they still poke me in the eye every chance they get. Okay, stop doing all that stuff. Right? When they're ready to stop poking you in the eye, then begin investing in that relationship again. If they're making choices that you can't agree with, something I'm actually dealing with at the moment, if they're making choices that you can't agree with, that you can't support, that doesn't mean that you have to act like they never existed. It just means that you disagree with them. And you can't support them in what they're doing. And if by being around them, engaging in that relationship, is damaging to you, then withdraw from them. I mean, you can't... In some of those relationships, right, especially the, the family relationship, you can't just say, you're not my parent anymore, you're not my child anymore, you're not my brother or sister anymore. But you don't have to invest in that relationship, you don't have to spend time with them. So, talk, now, if you take all of that information, you put that back into um, the idea of a third, a third, a third. A third of the people that build you up, pull you along, build you up. A third that are similarly situated and a third that you're bringing behind. Just make sure that they're in that lower third. If you can't jettison on the relationship, just make sure they're in that lower third. Right? Make offers, make uh, inroads to offer improvement to them as you go, but I, I just can't, I, I can't see where continuing to invest in a relationship that is one-sided is valuable for you. All right, so the other idea, and that this kind of plays into the other idea we talked about a lot this week, is Dunbar's number, 
151st order relationships. He says that that our mind is wired so that it can only support about 150 uh, first order relationships. Those people that we know their first name, they're they're our immediate friends. Now, second order, third order, friends of friends, friends of friends of friends. Um, <clears throat> we can have a lot more than 150, but those those first order. Now, to me, 150 is a lot. Still a lot to keep up with. I want you to think about it in this way. So, if you look at your, and, and different people use these tools in different ways, but I mean, we've got LinkedIn and Facebook, probably the two biggest ones, but then you've also got your Instagrams and Twitters and whatnot. These people that have millions of followers, they're not millions of friends. And you have on, uh, on Facebook, I think, will limit you to 5,000 friends. You can't have, I mean, I can't imagine that they know, without some kind of of memory aid, who this person is, where they met them, how long they've known them, what their interests are, right? So think about that close group of friends and divide it up into thirds. So whether it's 25 people or 250 people or 150 people, what does that group look like? Divide that up into thirds and then apply that law of averages to it. See how, just just examine, over the weekend, take some time to just examine how your friend network looks and uh, and what each one of them are doing for you. So the last thing I want to leave you with, talking about relationships, uh, is a book. And I'll put a link to this down in the comments. It's a book by a guy named Gary Chapman on the five love languages. And there are a ton of derivatives of this book now. Five love languages for men, for women, for dads, for moms, for children, for business owners, what what have you. So find the one that that, kind of looks best for you in your situation. But I'll leave a link there. You can go look at that. Here's the important thing. I remember um, kind of the first time looking at reading this book I'm going to look down here so I can see your comments, because I can't see them on the other screen there. Remember the first time reading this book, it was really eye-opening. The idea, two concepts that I'll share with you. There are, generally speaking, hence the name, five love languages that we all like to give love in and receive love in. And they're, they're different for different people. And we tend to, this number one, we tend to try to give love in the way that we would try to receive it, right? So when we are pouring into building a relationship, we try to do that in the way we would want it back. If it's spending time with somebody, if it's gifts, whatever the case may be, that's what we do in order to try and get that back. So here's key number two. Not everybody has the same love language you do. So those things that you are doing to try and build that relationship might be falling on deaf ears because they don't hear that way. Right? If you And this applies to all relationships. This is why I bring it up. It's called the five love languages. It applies to all relationships. If you are trying to win friends and influence people with gifts, and they would rather have you have you know, some act of service for them, those gifts don't mean anything to them. But because they're important to you, you're like, well, I'm giving you all these gifts. Why aren't you reciprocating? So understanding that there are different love languages, that different people have them, and that you need to find out what those are, super important to giving you some insights and some keys into building those important relationships, whether they are personal, business, what have you. They, they all kind of work the same way. All right, let's get through a couple of comments here. Uh, Brooke and Vicki, good morning to both of you. Thank both of you for being here. Yeah, so Brooke says, that's a great one, Brooke. You are the CEO of your life. Promote and demote and fire people as needed. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it, it and it, it's, it's easier for some personality types than others, but even for those... Sometimes these are hard things to do, but you have to be, as Brooks says, CEO of you incorporated, of your life. You gotta take control of that. Uh, Joe says, every relationship has a lifespan. Some last longer than others. 
and others are from situation or required environments. Knowing where the relationship is determines your actions and your decisions. Yeah, absolutely, I agree with that. Some of them have a lifespan, and we try to hang on to them a lot longer than necessary. Right? And some of them, I mean, these are great. There's great, so many examples here of, like, um, old high school friends or college friends that you hadn't seen in 20 years, and what do you have to, I mean, obviously there is a disconnect there because you didn't stay friends in the interim 20 years, right? So you've got some common shared experiences, which gives you some common languages and, and things to talk about. But I don't mean you have to be best friends. I mean, it's, it's, know that friendships and relationships have a lifespan. And then just deal with it. All right. I hope some of that has helped. We ran very long today, as Jeremy told me. I need to start calling the show seven plus minutes in the morning because I hadn't done one that was only seven minutes long in a long time. But uh, through all of, I mean, this is kind of an unusual topic for us, uh, difficult topic at times to talk about relationships. But I thought it was a good one, an important one for us to get through this week. If uh, if this has been helpful, beneficial to you, leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh, and we'll explore some of these topics. I'll put them in the rotation for us to talk about as we go forward. It is Friday. That means the weekend's coming up. I want to try something new. I was going to try it last weekend and wasn't exactly feeling up to snuff, but I think I'm going to get it in this weekend. The weekend update. Hey, all you Saturday Night Live fans. Um, Kind of a weekend recap, kind of uh, new topics, new views on the same topics that we talked about during this week, and then a preview of next week. Um, I think my goal right now is to do that on Instagram Live, so you have to watch that live, um, but we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. Uh, all of my updates over the weekend are on Instagram, so if you're not following me there, do so at Tom Rigsby. And uh, you'll find out anything and everything that goes on there over the weekend. All right, that's it. And one last word on relationships. Normally on Friday, uh, I say something along these lines that it is the weekend and time for you to invest in those important relationships, not because you've switched your mind off and you're not thinking about work. We do that all the time. <laughs> but because other people have. Those other people, the other half of those relationships have, this is the time where they are looking to you to be present. So do that. Being present is one of the greatest gifts that you can give other people that are important in your life. All right, that's it. I'll be back again on Monday with another brand new installment. Be sure to join me then. Until then, have a wonderful weekend. I'll talk to you on Monday.